Hello, hello. I am I'm just familiarizing with the, the session and just checking out all of my goodness, the people who are here. This is wonderful. All right. Well, you're here for what multiplayer Istio. Okay. Uh, there's probably any number of you or almost um, all of you here that work with Istio. Some of you might say that you play with Istio. Uh, I wonder how many of you have uh, been in a multiplayer Istio. Um, we're going we're gonna to explore that today. There's been a lot of multi-playing with Istio between uh, my co-presenter Shin and I. So by the way, uh, my name is Lee Calcote. I'm the founder of Layer 5. Um, I'm joined by Shin Hong of um, Intel. Um, he is, he'll be with us on the second half of this presentation. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that. Oh, good. All right. So, so what was it? Uh, multiplayer Istio collaborative Wasm plugins. That's right. Collaborative. It was about an hour before, um, well, right now, I was cleaning up some slides, you know, or maybe I was creating some slides. You, you'll never know. Uh, and I, while doing so, Google Slides said that, uh, hey, there's a new feature. You can collaborate more easily with live pointers. I thought, how true is that? That's very true. Um, and I think it's pretty um, evident why that's true. If you want to be on the same page with somebody, you grab a whiteboard a lot of times. Um, in this day and age, a lot of us work remote. Heck, some of us attend virtual conferences. We do a lot of remote things. Um, it's nice to be able to share a screen, share, you know, get, get your mice interacting. Um, and clearly, Google thinks that that's the, the true as well. So that's, I thought that was kind of timely because we're going to talk about uh, multiple mice. And um, that's in part how we're going to do multiplayer Istio. Um, the focus for Shin and I these last um, few months as we've been doing lots of collaboration um, has been on um, WebAssembly filters uh, and Wasm plugins you know, in, inside of Istio. So Istio's, you know, some of you know this, some of you um, have written this, some of you um, are unfamiliar with some of this. So, so irrespective, we're going to go through it, which is that Istio has, um, well, an extensibility story, um, a story that's near and dear to my heart, uh, as well as um, a story around integrations, I think probably previously referred to as add-ons, or maybe they still are. Um, Istio's extensibility story um, takes us into proxy land, into the data plane. Um, and Istio's ability to, well, so sort of um, impressively, dynamically load and unload uh, WebAssembly filters or Envoy filters compiled to, to WebAssembly. Um, really cool, because you get to, it's a, that's a ton of control, a ton of power to have in your hands and, and uh, have over your traffic. Um, and whether you want to use those filters to to do things like additional security, maybe some some more telemetry, uh, maybe uh, like like there's a, a number of things to be done with um, with that traffic with intercepting it. Maybe you want to you know you've got a couple of filters that you want to have handle your requests, so maybe you'd like to chain them together. Um, so so a pretty cool capability. We all know that at least in some of the well, we all know that for when we're talking about on Istio sidecars, it's an Envoy-based um, thing, and Envoy's capability to, to have either um, pre-compiled filters and have those built in and shipped with the Envoy image, or um, in this case, dynamically loaded filters um, for real-time use cases that you might you might have, a lot of us have. Um, it's pre pretty cool. So anyway, the extensibility um, functionality is just super interesting. It can also be a bit, um, well, well, anything that's sophisticated is often somewhat complex. And so um, we're gonna, that's in part what we're going to talk about today is some um, how, to, how to wrangle part of that. Um, the integrations here are, um, well, less um, dangerous, maybe, or less, uh, it's, it's, you know, integrations are like using an, 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 a third-party capability and enhancing the experience that Istio Mesh delivers. Whereas um, this extensibility is like, well, no, you're, you potentially are writing Wasm filters and augmenting the um, core functionality of how the mesh behaves, or maybe you're borrowing someone else's filters. But, but either way, 
um, there's a little bit of a difference between the, the, the level of depth of, of behavioral change that you have depending upon extensibility or integrations. <laughs> so Istio proxy extensibility, you know, there's you know, primarily two, two configurable resources uh, for managing Envoy filters for managing um, Wasm plugins in Istio. One of those, and probably the, the um, eldest of the two, is Envoy filter. And you know, feel free to correct me in the chat if I'm if I misstate this. But so it's it's in alpha, and and I think the the right way to to refer to that cap that resource that capability is that it's not likely to make its way into beta or stable. Rather, um, its successor. Uh, or its um, younger sibling, the Wasm plugin is a new, a newer, a newer resource, still in alpha as well, um, but probably on its way towards uh, beta and towards stable at, at some point. Um, there's additional functionality that's being built in um, uh, into Wasm plugin, um, so you'll find some of that from Envoy filter, um, uh, but maybe a smaller configuration area in Wasm plugin, maybe one that's a little more safe. If you think about Istio as a platform and its extensibility, any platform that you extend or that you um, inject a plugin into, there's a lot of responsibility on the platform to not fall over or to, to have a sandbox around um, what's, what's happening inside of that plugin. And so um, in part, uh, the objectives of Wasm plugin as I understand it going forward are to, well, maybe help reduce some of that configurable surface area, help um, eliminate some of the like expert knowledge potentially needed to configure Envoy in this way. Um, there's some nice in enhancements that Wasm plugin brings as a resource. Um, and that is to specify, that to do filter chaining and to specify the order in which um, you'd like for these filters to, to um, do their thing. Um, also, there's uh, additional ways to retrieve the filters themselves um, through a couple of other protocols other than just file, which I believe is the only one that Envoy filter supports. So anyway, hopefully I didn't confuse. There's a number of things if you think about the lifecycle management of uh, an Envoy. Well, maybe I shouldn't use the term Envoy filter. If you think about the lifecycle management of a Wasm plugin, um, there are any number of concerns like, hey, is, is the, you know, what version are you using? How is that um, Wasm plugin image, that, that small binary, how is that distributed? Um, is that um, cached? Um, is it not? Is there an image pull policy? Um, yes, there is, by the way, an image pull policy in um, Istio uh, using Wasm plugin. Um, like any powerful feature, um, well, you've got to be a, a bit knowledgeable about you know how you're configuring these things so you don't I don't know, so you don't over pull in this case as a, in, in that example. But there's a number, so the, suffice to say, there's a number of concerns as you go to do lifecycle management of awesome plugins. And so the Istio control plane is um, helping with lots of this, or Istio itself just helps with this. Um, there are other tools in the CNCF. Um, Meshery is uh, one of those uh, that ends up, um, well, hopefully helping people as they go to run Istio or other cloud native infrastructure. So Meshery is a sandbox project at the moment. It is, um, it has a few different adapters. Um, each of those adapters have historically been focused on um, integrating deeply with service meshes, um, notably with Istio. Uh, anymore, it has just expanded over the last couple of years to do multi-cluster, multi-Kubernetes cluster management. Um, have some workflow built in, have a, a catalog, do some, some GitOps. Um, there's, there's, it's kind of a, a mouthful actually um, to do some performance management. But uh, so there's a Meshery adapter, speaking of plugins and extensibility, Meshery is uh, quite the extensible platform. Um, Meshery adapters, there's one for Istio. The adapters are one of the ways in which Meshery is extensible. And so, it's um, if we kind of look at Istio as a project and its extensibility and its integrations um, in a similar way, Meshery as a platform has an extensibility story. And, and this is probably a bit of an eye chart, but it is um, where you see the yellow here is where, where there are, uh, where Meshery is pluggable. Um, and one of those places that we, that is highlighted is 
um, filter management, and the ability to have a, a catalog of WebAssembly Wasm Envoy filters and um, help Istio or help you distribute those to your various Istio um, control planes and, and to manage them. And, and so um, there's, here's, here's a, a, another eye chart for you. Recently in, in the collaborations that Shin and, and some of the other folks at Intel and the, the community within um, the Meshery project, there's been a fair bit of recent focus on support for Wasm filters. Um, Shin will tell you about this in a moment. Um, but Intel wants to do a number of different things with uh, Wasm filters. Um, there's been a couple of blog posts that some of you, again, might, might have helped write or you've probably read on istio.io um, about some of the work that they've been doing um, either with like enhanced um, load balancing or uh, hardware accelerated um, MTLS. And some of that is facilitated through um, Wasm plugins. And so as you get more of those Wasm plugins and you go to manage their life cycle and go to, go to um, store them or go to under, you know, keep their configurations and track their configurations, a tool like Meshery is built to help with that. Okay. Uh, it, it is, uh, so, so now I get to explain why it is that Shin isn't here with us. One, uh, this isn't, uh, one is for, 26 a.m. for him, but that's not, he's not a slacker. That's not why he's here. It's uh, the, well, it's the, the Great Firewall of China um, made it a super pain in the rump to um, uh, live uh, record our collaborations. And we, we were able to get it done, but, but uh, so fresh as of this morning, he has, um, well, a, a demo to share with you about all the stuff that I just took us through. And he's going to tell us more about um, Intel's doings with um, WebAssembly filters. Does anyone else have a hard time clicking and uh, talking at the same time? Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna so I'm gonna load up a video. We're gonna watch um, Shin for for a few minutes here, and do message in the channel if you can't hear it, but you should. Well, from Intel China. I'm a cloud native software developer focusing on the service mesh acceleration. And I'm also the maintainer of the CNCF sandbox project, service mesh performance. I'm very happy today to present with Lee and I will show you the demo. Let's start. Before we dive in, let's start where it begins with the installation. Let's start with installing Meshery through Meshery CTL. So I will be passing the design platform on which I'd like to install Meshery, which is Kubernetes for today's demo. Although Meshery supports a wide array of other platforms, Meshery CTL would auto open my default browser at a location while the freshly running Meshery server is listening to. We land on Meshery Cloud Dashboard. It facilitates management of all Meshery servers right from one place. It also gives a list of active users from one org or one team based on the privileges assigned to the user. Let's navigate to the public phasing catalog, which is a highly curated list of reusable infrastructure design or other sites of configuration like Watson filters and in future would be supporting OPA policy, eBPF programs. This is one of my design that I had published a few weeks ago. With this Meshery design, you can install Istio and uh, enable Intel T QAT acceleration for the TLS handshake in the Istio gateway. I know that was mouthful of words, but in a moment, I will demonstrate how such complex 
cloud native infrastructures can be virtually comprehended. This is the mesh read dashboard. It gives an overview of different things either rejected or discovered by the server. You can see it discovered the workload in cluster, but there was no service mesh installed. So at first, we will need to deploy mesh read adapter for Istio service mesh. The work of the adapter is to readily integrate with Istio service mesh and all of its capabilities. It runs as a separate container and communicates with Meshri over gRPC. Now I would be connecting to Meshri adapter instance running at pod 10,000. Before moving forward, let's first check the connection to our Meshri adapter and it looks like Meshri was able to reach out to the newly deployed adapter. Meet me after the demo and I will tell you the secret of running multiple instances of same mesh read adapter. And let's go to the mesh map visualizer to see what's going on in my cluster. It gives a logically representation of my entire cluster and the resources discovered within its environment. This makes things crystal clear while debugging. And then this is the folder page where we can manage our WhatsApp filters. Here we can upload new WhatsApp filters, update the config for any of our existing filters, download the binary or publish directly to catalog. Let's input a WhatsApp filter name package parser tcp. There is the file upload and uh, YAML config. Then we can choose the WhatsApp binary file. And let's go back to the mesh map. It has another mode designer. You can choose and drag and drop many useful components and uh, WhatsApp filters when you create your design. And you can also filter and use existing public design with your teammates. Let's work on the design is to HTTP hider filter. You can see my teammates collaborating on the design here. In this design, we have the persistent volume, persistent volume claims, the Prometheus pod, and the HTTP bin deployment in default namespace. You can also click the resource to check out its details and modify it easily. And uh, we can also connect the resources like that. And we do have a HTTP filter which is pre-configured with a WhatsApp plugin. Oh, I can see that my teammates add a GitHub runner. It can help the integration with the GitHub. And I want to add an Argo workflow in the design. Besides, one of my favorite features is the ability to leave comments. It not only helps in documenting any important notes, but also work great for real-time conversation with the teammates. I can see that Lee had to leave a comment. Let's see what he said. Okay, fine. It seems that I need to delete the GitHub runner and the Argo workflow. Before we deploy it, let's go back to the virtualizer to find that we don't have an Istio installed. So we need to navigate to the lifecycle page to deploy an Istio. The next base to install Istio will be Istio system and we will deploy it to the same cluster which have the design. Then we can 
click the, the deploy and let's open another window to see whether is 2 is deployed in the cluster Okay, I can see the S2 system namespace and uh, let's see the resource in the namespace. Pods, series, and the deployments. It's all good. And we can also easily deploy uh, Grafana and Prometheus. Then we can go back to the mesh map and uh, see if we are able to deploy the design into our Kubernetes cluster. Uh, looks like we go through deployment bugs. Okay, uh, let me see what's new in the comments. Okay. Okay, let's try Envoy Filter instead of Wasm Plugin. I will go over here to clone a copy. After we fix it, we can deploy the design into our cluster. Let's go back to the Visualizer to have an overview. S2 HTTP filter is good and uh, the pods which have the WASM filters were deployed as well. And another part we can do is the actions. We can open the terminal to execute some operations and see what's going on in the pods. We can choose which container to work with. We can do some operations like input some commands to check the connections to other pods. Another interesting thing we can do is to run a performance test. You can choose an existing performance profile and input your application URL. You can also input additional options or upload certificates. Okay, run the test. And then uh, we can go to the performance page to check the test results. And uh, here is the results. And we can also make a comparison between two results. We can also go over here to see the node details, Kubernetes cluster version, and uh, the performance result chart. At last, please let me take a moment to introduce the Intel at the Wasim. Intel Cloud Native team is also actually participate in the exploring the WASM filter in cloud native and the security. As the first step, we made efforts in the security area. We partnered with TechTrade to provide an E2 WASM plugin integrated with model security to implement the WAF functionality in the HTTP filter chain. However, you may know that model security is transitioning to end of life, effective March 31st, 2024. And an alternative WARF engine code Kalazi is growing. So we are also investigating and observing its integration with Wasim.
And we are also working on the integration of Wasim and Intel hardware acceleration. Please contact me later if you are interested. Thank you very much. Oh, very good. All right. Well, so uh, there were a lot of things covered uh, there. I'm going to share these slides again. And um, man, yeah, again, anyway, I have to give it to Shin for um, covering all that. And also, and also, um, so so quickly because that's pretty fresh. Um, so one of the things that um, Shin just spoke about was um, a number of the different um, Intel-driven initiatives around um, Wasm filter creation. Um, some of those you can find in the Meshery catalog. So there's a well, there's a public-facing um, catalog of not only Wasm filters, but also the designs, those visual designs that Shin was showing um, are users of Mesh, we can choose to publish those designs and make them reusable for others and to collaborate. Um, and so, yep, so there's, um, uh, that catalog is out at meshri.io slash catalog. The environment that Shin was just using is well, it's hosted by the CNCF. It's um, it's a two-node. Uh, it's not a two-node cluster. It's um, two nodes with um, Meshery running on one node and Kubernetes running on the other. Um, and it's available to you all um, to go and well, like if whether you're advanced with Wasm plugins or just starting, to go out and well pull down the designs that Shin was just um, creating um, to try them out, to clone them, to um, republish them if you want to. Um, this environment has a, so a hosted meshery with uh, a live Kubernetes cluster. And um, you should go try it. Go, go see if, if this helps you like it did Shin and I in your collaborations with your teammates um, in understanding what the heck is going on in the whether it's in the data plane or, or elsewhere. Um, yep, the community would surely appreciate your feedback, but um, all of you might uh, benefit from it as well. That playground is, well, it's cleaned out um, on a nightly basis, but if you work on any designs inside there, those are saved off. So you, you don't lose your work in that sense. Um, but just in case there's any crypto miners, it, it gets cleaned out every night, so. Um, yeah, so hopefully you your noodle got tickled a little bit. Um, hit me with your questions um, if you like here or or after the fact. And Shin, um, he might even be on at the moment, but but he's certainly asking for feedback. He's they're certainly looking for collaborators um, in the Wasm filters that they're doing. Uh, go out and give that that visual designer a try. See if it if it helps you. Yeah. I forget that we we can't do Q and A like you know live, so I'll just I just keep monologuing. And uh, anyway, um, good. Well, Shin, thanks so much um, for for the collaboration. Um, go out and use Istio's extensibility. Go run yourself a few chained uh, Wasm plugins. It's pretty cool. It's pretty neat how it um, just the ability to dynamically load and unload. Um, and if you make a mistake, well, then you'll be in good company. Um, so anyway, okay, good. Well, thanks all. Um, we'll see you in the chat. We'll see you, uh, uh at the rest of IstioCon. Well, I'll check chat just in case people have questions just before we... while you're fervously, you know, typing, feverishly typing. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Yeah, because they make up everything. So anyway, I figured I'd just slip that in while in case we had questions coming through.
good. I might be looking in the wrong place, but I don't see any just yet. So, all right. Well, thanks so much for having us. Uh, we'll see you at the next one.